Transmission start. Welcome to Where Did the Road Go? Join us as we wander off the path and explore lost history, consciousness, the paranormal, unexplained mysteries, alternative thought, and much more. We are present on the web at wheredidtheroadgo.com. Now here is your host, Soraya. Welcome to this short edition of Where Did the Road Go? And I'm here with Red Pill Junkie, Super Inframan, and Christopher Ernst. Hello, everyone. Hello. And Hola. I, and I wanted to address, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll read some, some clips from the Hills article, uh, which is just an opinion piece. Uh, Congress implies UFOs have non-human origin. Um, and this was written by, Ma oh, wow, Marik von Renenkampf. And this is, I've, I've seen a number of people have sent me this. And when I look at it, I'm not reading it like they're reading it. So it, Congress in, you know, uh, setting up this, this whole, okay. So in Congress where legislation, okay. Lawmakers recently made several striking revisions to the definition of UFO. And I thought they were UAPs now, not UFOs. But <laughs> now we're back to UFO. Uh, key among them, the explosive implication that some UFOs have non-human origins. And the way this actually lays out, so it says the revised definition of UFOs also includes transmedium objects, which according to lawmakers, transition between space and the atmosphere, between atmosphere and bodies of water, which we know UFOs tend to do. Uh, in short, members of the key National Security Focus Committee believe that objects of unknown origin are demonstrating remarkably advanced technology by moving seamlessly between space, air, and water. Uh, a report accompanying the legislation notes that transmedium threats to the United States national security are expanding exponentially, which doesn't really tell us anything uh, specific. Uh, it strains credulity to believe that lawmakers would include such extraordinary language in public legislation without compelling evidence. I don't think that's true. Um, so it gets down here and it says, okay, so most strikingly, Congress's new definition of UF, uh, UFO excludes man-made objects. So what they're saying is that one of the, for something to be cataloged as a ufo it cannot be a man-made object and that mm -hmm. seems sensible but it's also not saying sure. that ufos are you know that they're not it, it, it's one of those slight subtleties they're yeah, not they're it doesn't not, make the logical jump that therefore aliens therefore extraterrestrials yeah, it's just saying what it's not right exactly yes. So they're saying if they investigate something and they go, oh, that's a drone, it gets sent to a different department. That's what it's saying. They had to define yep. what a UFO is, and that's what they're studying. So if they have no indication that it is a man-made object, then it's something they want to study. That is not them saying UFOs are not, you know, they're, they're not making a statement about what UFOs are. They're defining the term mm -hmm. and what they're going to study. And one makes it, can wonder why are they defining the term thusly? What is the purpose behind that? Uh, according to this, it's, you know, so if it's if it seems to be a man-made object, you send it to the appropriate security group. Yeah, it's right. possible it's just the taxonomy, the, the like the bureaucracy, but it also could not, it also could be something else. Yeah. Just knowing sort of how the bureaucracy of, of like these systems work, as I'm sure you all do to certain, you know, at your extent, for certainly more than me, probably. But uh, it, it just it seems like the kind of thing that I could see happening, that kind of like, well, we got to define what this is before we can actually make this happen. You know, I do like well, or it could be also be uh, sorry that the idea that uh, sending the really, really weird cases you know the ones that really can be cannot be explained uh, with conventional uh, technological uh, solutions to some kind of like basement in the Pentagon, and that's where they will keep <laughs> right, the, the right, X files. Right, right, Using right. you know the idea of that you know the the leader of the task force is gonna be some kind of like uh, modern version of Fox Mulder, who's gonna get you know his file cabinet filled with those few cases that really have no conventional explanation but maybe that's one way in order to try to uh lessen the burden of this new uap 
uh, office that they are in the process of, of, of building and nobody knows, you know, just how many people are going to uh, work there. My suspicion is it's not probably going to be as many as uh, the people that work in Project Blue Book, which was, you know, like pitiful. You know, there were, I think, like four people working on, on Project yeah. Blue Book yeah. in the heyday. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely a a. It seems like it's a more serious step than Project Blue Book was. Um, but Possibly. we don't we don't know what this is going to all end up as, and it wouldn't be shocking if it just ends up with another you know dismissive sort of thing toward toward the UFO phenomena. Right. And and it also says things like, um, oh, where is it? You know, uh, aviators will identify this stuff as not. Oh, where is the exact quote? Top Top Gun trained aviators remain convinced that they observed objects not of this world, uh, and they have not ruled out extraterrestrial origins for UFOs. Okay, but that doesn't mean that even Top Gun trained aviators know all the black projects that exist, and right, so. they're not going to tell them if they don't know about them. And mm -hmm. that doesn't say anything about them being extra. You know, just because you don't know if you, even if you could say that's definitely not man made, that doesn't mean it's from another planet. Exactly. You know, and then they go on to like Obama and Clinton mentioning UFOs and stuff. And uh, it's just, you know, when you take all this stuff and you, and you read more into it, it sounds really interesting. But when you get right down to it, they're, all they're doing is, is defining what a UFO is. It's something that is not man-made, that has transmedium proper, properties where it can move seamlessly between air, space, water, which is one of the things UFOs have always done that a lot of people seem to ignore because to be in space, you have zero pressure and underwater, you have massive pressure to design something that can withstand both of those. It's not the same thing. A lot of people are like, well, they're, you know, spacecraft can go underwater because they're, you know, built to withstand it, but it's exactly the opposite of outer space. Mm, not necessarily, because when you have uh, re-entry to the atmosphere, I, I, I really think those uh, capsules and those vehicles have to withstand not only an enormous amount of uh, you know, heat right. uh, as they are you know, skirting through the layers of the atmosphere, but I think they also have to withstand enormous amounts of uh, pressure. I mean, I, may be, I might be wrong, I'm not, I'm not an engineer, but... Uh, uh, yeah, obviously, space is a vacuum. But, I, uh, I mean, I think they're both pressurized, but it, yes. it would depend on, like, it, 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 yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is, again, a bunch of people aren't engineers talking, but it has to be <laughs> yes, pressurized. I mean, but I think that it's a similar, like, if you could find some sort of advanced exotic, you know, uh, way of dealing with pressure, um, it's both based upon pressure. One is a vacuum, one is a... Oh, yeah. The yes. And, of course, yeah. yeah, those capsules have to be pressurized because... They have to contain o the oxygen that is needed for uh, a human being to breathe in. Of course, right. that becomes irrelevant if the craft is, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, it's a drone, you know, it's uh, right. something that right. is not you know, operated you know, by a man inside. Yeah. It just has to not get crushed um, mm -hmm. uh, under uh, pressure at depth. Yeah. yeah. Which, so, I mean... I can see this from different angles, you know, at the same time. from I could see that from the point of view of the disclosure advocates and say, well, uh, if some country in this world had the technology that is apparently exhibited by these objects, the transmedian capability, the immediate acceleration, apparent anti-gravity, yada, 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 you know, the, the five observables that uh, Louis Lissando uh, coined, uh, it's game over for the rest of the world, you know, yeah, like uh, yeah. Gary Nolan said in one of those uh, Channel 7 Australian uh, uh, specials that have been uh, recently aired, uh, like China will own the United States if they had such capabilities, you know, oh, Vladimir absolutely. Putin will say, yeah, guys, Ukraine is mine. And what are you going to do about it? And not only Ukraine, but also Iran and Afghanistan and the whole of Asia, <laughs> you know, so there's that. I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, uh, this is technology that is so apparently so far ahead of anything the United States apparently has. And also, if the United States had this, this, this technology, 
why are why are they still competing with China? Right. You know, with 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 fighter jets right. and, and and missiles. You know, it's like you know, let's put a McDonald's and and on the Red Square. <laughs> <laughs> but and on the other hand this idea of uh okay they say okay there's the ufos are not man-made well that doesn't mean that ufos could not be some sort of unknown uh natural phenomenon right that we yes. haven't uh, unraveled yet some kind of like maybe uh some sort of plasma yep. based phenomenon that uh, could elicit some very interesting uh, capabilities, including the capability of affecting the human brain uh, in ways that maybe it could induce hallucinations. And this is something that was actually studied by the British in this, uh, I think, I believe it's called the Condine paper or the Condine memo. This is something that Nick Pope has uh, mentioned a couple of times, in which the British intelligence studied the possibility of plasma-based phenomenon affecting the temporal lobe of the brain of witnesses. And maybe that could account for the testimony of people who, you know, claim to have witnessed not only luminous uh, uh, objects in the sky, you know, something that could be plasma, but also uh, structure craft and or even interacted with uh, intelligent entities coming out of this craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Andrew Collins posits that in his Light Quest book that these are that what's happening is when people get closer to these things, it creates sort of a bubble universe that they interact in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, when when it comes to this report, though, I mean, Congress is not saying that ufos are real and are not of this earth it's defining the term ufo as something that is not man-made and it's a subtle difference but it's an important one and people are jumping to the conclusion that they are officially saying you know oh ufos are are extraterrestrial or ufos are interdimensional or whatever when we really don't know exactly they're just laying out no. what they're going to study yeah so yeah people ha are on their these uh hope or maybe delusion that the the lawmakers are you know drafting uh these bills and are you know putting all these definitions within uh american you know laws that they somehow have been privy to this privileged information that confirms without a shadow of a doubt that we are indeed dealing with extraterrestrials yeah, yeah and can we say that for certain i don't know like let's put uh, maybe a cynical example i i'm old enough to remember how the united states tried to sell to the world the idea that saddam hussein uh had m weapons of mass destruction <laughs> Mm -hmm. And by showing all these blurry photographs, like of, of things that look like uh, ice cream vans, you know, ice cream trucks, and saying, "You see, that's where Saddam is keeping all these his uh, chemical, you know, weapons right, and nerve right. gases and, and all that." And I'm sure those kind of photographs were shown to congressmen and senators by oh, yeah. intelligence agents and saying. You see this blurry photo, uh, Senator? That is where they keep their weapons of mass destruction. And, and the Senator will say, okay, if you say so, all right, I, 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 I'll take your word for it. It look, just looks like a blurry, you know, <laughs> white re re rectangle to me. Well, you so know, I, guess, I guess I'll sign the paper you want me to sign. Right. I mean, one guy lies, the next guy swears to it. And then it's like, well, okay, well, I guess you guys are telling the truth. Yeah. And turns out they didn't. Yeah. So, I mean, I just go with never trust the government. <laughs> they're not actually here to help in most cases. So, uh, right. they, they're, and they're not beholden to actually tell us this stuff. So whatever they're doing, there may be some, some honest inquiry going on with some of these people, but I think it's also being managed very carefully. And we got to stop jumping at, you know, freaking out about every little thing that could be interpreted one way or another. Whereas this is very clearly not them acknowledging that UFOs are from somewhere else, but that the term UFO defines something not man-made. And that's the type of stuff they're looking to study. 
And um, obviously, in government, there probably are people who are genuinely interested in the phenomenon. I'm sure there are. Who more than more than probably have had uh, experiences of their own. You know, you know, yep. maybe a close encounter sighting, maybe something even more dramatic, more dramatic than that. And maybe they, they 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 want to learn. You know, they want to find the answers uh, by themselves. Uh, but the thing that I mean, I'm sure that people who have, uh, have listened to us on previous occasions will say, these guys are so cynical, they are so <laughs> skeptical, you know, why can't <laughs> you, they just jump in the disclosure wagon for a change? I mean, guys, we, we could be wrong, and in Absolutely. fact, maybe they, there, there is a good reason why the U.S. government is, is all of a sudden embracing the things that they're denied for decades, you know, since the 1940s. Maybe there is a good reason for that. Maybe, you know, they know that uh, there is going to be a future event or something that is forcing their hand in in adopting these new measures. Maybe, you know, I I will be the first one to be generally surprised uh, about that and will welcome that. What we're trying to do is just guys try to caution people not to take the, all these with a with a grain of salt yeah you know don't exactly. not, don't believe it just yeah. because just because you read it on the hill and there yeah. there is a phenomena out there there is a ufo phenomena that has persisted throughout time across cultures it's not you know whether or not the government acknowledges it really doesn't matter Exactly. And, you know, and, uh, so this is, I was chuckling at Red Pill talking about us all being cynics because my cynicism is going back to government and, you know, politicians want to look like they've done something. Yeah. And so if something is in the news cycle, uh, they're going to support something like this just because, like, oh, yeah, well, we took care of that or we addressed it. Yep. You true. know, whether or not there's any sincerity there, um, and it's a way to kind of, it's almost like patting you on the head. Like, okay, oh, yeah, we did something about that. You know, good job. All right. Also, perhaps. Yeah, on to the next thing. Also, we're, we're, we're not up here being a waste of space. <laughs> also, perhaps, uh, look over here. We're looking at UFOs. Don't look at what we're doing over here. Right. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Well, thank you, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You have been listening to Where Did the Road Go? This show is made possible in part from our Patreons, and we thank you and everyone listening for helping us continue this exploration of the strange. You can always find everything Where Did the Road Go related at www.wheredidtheroadgo.com. And thank you so much for your support.